My name is Michael Wasserman, and I am here tonight to discuss the importance of the humanities in the 21st century. As of last week, I am now a graduate of Arizona State University. Thank you, thank you. It is a wonderfully terrifying time to be graduating, but thankfully the uh, rapture is set to kick off here in a few hours, so I graduated just in time. Regardless, I feel very honored to be here with you this evening, and with that being said, I'll jump right in. It can safely be said that we are now living in one of the most intellectually stimulating and culturally vibrant eras of human history. We also exist in an era that places a premium on the advancement of science and technology. As an undergraduate, I had the fortunate opportunity this last semester to take a course alongside four other undergraduates and 22 graduate students taught by Arizona State University's President Michael Crow and Dr. Daniel Sarowitz. The course was entitled Science, Technology, and Public Affairs. It was a science policy course. And given that I was the only English major in the class, it posed to be a considerable challenge, but not an insurmountable one. I approached the class with a humanities lens and was able to take away that the general public willingly admits that science and technology have a certain supremacy in our current epic, but for the most part, we have a very limited and naive understanding of what these concepts actually signify. Nonetheless, we can see that they are important. The opposite, however, is true for the humanities. We do not perceive any immediate benefit or impact of the liberal arts in our day-to-day -day lives, and it's not that these benefits don't, do, don't exist, it's just that we do a terrible job of recognizing them. Take, for example, the etymological origin of the word technology. It stems from the Greek word techni, which is defined as the name not only for the skills of the craftsman, but the arts of the mind and the fine arts. We tend to think of technology as a process of manufacturing, when in fact it is a process of revealing. Revealing our wants, our needs, our very conditions of being human. There is more of ourselves in technology than we willingly recognize. So why the humanities then? Well, simply put, the humanities afford us the opportunity to examine and tease out these very human conditions. Unfortunately, we tend to lose sight of this fact. There is a crisis occurring on campuses, both at the secondary and post-secondary level. We are encouraging students to become increasingly more specialized without allowing them to stop and ask why they are becoming more specialized. In their brilliant work, Academically Adrift, sociologists Josipa Roxa and Richard Aram have compiled extensive research over the past few years assessing the state of the higher education system in the United States. They disseminated a survey called the Collegiate Learning Assessment across a variety of reputable liberal arts colleges and major research universities in the hopes of assessing the core outcomes espoused by all of higher education, namely critical thinking, analytical reasoning, problem solving, and writing. It's the very reason that those of you who went to college, went to college. And their findings show that a majority of those individuals who demonstrated significant gains in these areas were, you guessed it, humanities majors. And those individuals who demonstrated the least amount of improvement were business majors. <laughs> now, their findings aren't all that surprising. American business owners regularly lament that the graduates that they're hiring cannot write effectively, nor can they think abstractly. And I'm not arguing that the humanities solely can function as a panacea for all of our social ills, but if they are integrated appropriately, they can function as a unique vantage point. Take, for example, the late multimillionaire Sidney Harmon, CEO and founder of Harmon Industries and purchaser of Newsweek. Harmon is quoted as saying, I used to tell my senior staff to get me poets as managers. Poets are our original systems thinkers. They look at our most complex environments and they reduce that complexity to something they begin to understand. The question then is why? We assume that Harmon is a relatively intelligent individual and he is obviously successful, or was successful. Why would he advocate that poets are a conduit for understanding? Well, I think that Har uh, Harmon understands precisely what few individuals are capable of understanding, that the economic marketplace is composed of human actions solely. Through studying the humanities, we come to better understand some of the reasons and motivations behind these actions. Now, more than ever before, we need to remind ourselves that our collective life stories and our emotional responses are precisely what make life lively. 
So to paraphrase Samuel Beckett, we should not be so fearful of making mistakes. Rather, let us fail again, but fail better. If we want to exist and thrive as a nation and as a global community, we can only do so through advancing our understanding of the human condition. Thank you very much.